Hey, deserving listeners, the ultimatum, queer love. Let's watch. Initially, I was attracted to Ray because I've dated someone like Ray, and, you know, she was fun, and... Who was that? What? Who is this? It's a bumble person. Never knew about this. We've been together for four years. Never heard about this human. Okay, so Xander's being asked who she, they wanted to be with, and Xander is saying that initially it was Ray, and Ray's saying, yeah, you know, I dated someone like Ray in the past, and then Vanessa chimes in and says, really, who, who was that? And Xander's like, oh, well, you know, this is a long time ago, someone on Bumble, and Vanessa seems upset that she hadn't heard of that before. So we don't know, but at least, at least the way it looks on the surface is that Vanessa is being unfair and saying, how come you didn't tell me about every single person that you dated in the past? And uh, that usually isn't the cultural practice, right? On the other hand, if at some point the two of them said, okay, let's be fully honest and say everyone we've dated in the past, and they thought they had exhausted the entire list, and Vanessa is like, you didn't put that person on the list. Now, I can't imagine that being the case, but that'd be the only reason as to why that would give a basis for Vanessa to be upset with that. <laughs> I mean, the fact that Xander has a, a previous uh, dating life uh, prior to being with Vanessa and vice versa shouldn't surprise Vanessa. But I think where Vanessa is coming from is she's used to having the upper hand in the relationship and uh, not because she sets out to do that is my guess, but because she isn't aware of her needs and will um, deny that. But there's, as I've been hypothesizing, a vast sea of just unbridled, undifferentiated longing for someone to love her. And uh, she believes that no one ever will, so she denies that. And then she will let some of her needs get met by being in a relationship but she gives off a vibe and then is explicitly telling Xander that she doesn't want to settle down, even though it's possible that she wants to settle down even more than Xander does, but is way more worried. Vanessa is way more worried about being rejected in the end. So she is conflicted about it. And so it's possible, I don't know, I'm basing all this on very little information, but that for Vanessa, even though she comes across as though, especially to Xander, that she doesn't really want a long-term relationship or that she's aloof a little above it all, that deep down she's desperately hurting and uh, on a level that someone a lot younger might actually feel in a very undifferentiated way. And, you know, meaning that younger people and people who've been through a lot of traumas, the you know, given how much they're hurt and how much they're triggered, it's really hard to differentiate. It's really hard to sift through what's happening for you and it can be just overwhelming. So it's possible that for Vanessa, she's experiencing that overwhelming feeling and she can't evaluate the feelings enough to not engage in this kind of behavior of being hostile with Xander for just saying that she connected with someone else. Learning about this. what? I've never heard about this ex. It wasn't an ex, really. It was it's like, very it interesting. Was more very, like a very in between stage. Okay, now maybe Vanessa is just being her way in a very conversational, outgoing sort of way. Maybe she doesn't mean it to be hostile. She's just being playful or something. We, we could allow for that. But Xander's saying it wasn't really even dating. It sounds like maybe just a really minor relationship or a hookup or something. So the fact that Xander didn't tell Vanessa about every single person she'd ever been with in her entire life uh, shouldn't surprise Vanessa. I feel like I knew most of Xander's ex-love life and this... I will clarify that it was an in-between stage of a bumble tender person. Not Is this, this like tractor girl? All. Okay. No. We're going to go back to you, Xander. Okay, great, great. <laughs> Right. It seems like Vanessa is lighter in tone than it what seemed to be initially, that she's laughing about it. Maybe she's just extremely extroverted and whatever pops into her head, she says. Some people are like that in a non-pathological way. It could come across as annoying, but you know, I have a friend like this, that whatever pops into his head, he just says. 
it's not one of the people that you know, you know, because a lot of my friends are actually on the podcast. I mean, Umberto is kind of like this, but he, he uh, Umberto has a, a very, usually a very good ability at not just saying whatever is on his mind. He's a lot more extroverted than the average person. But, but I have another friend who will shoot himself in the foot by having no editor. It, he just, he just blurts things out. And, you know, usually for the average individual is we will have hostile judgmental thoughts building up over time. And then it becomes too much to handle. Then we say something about it, right? So if someone says something that is even passively hostile, usually we interpret that as, oh, there's a lot more behind that. But for some people, literally every thought that crosses their head just comes out of their mouth uh, because of the way they're raised or their disposition. And of course, there could be a pathological version of this, but it isn't always. We're going to go back to you, Xander. Okay, great, great. <laughs> Wow. What? Wow. <laughs> wow. I mean, uh, there's a. Uh, so if I knew Vanessa or I was there, I'd be like, so what are you trying to communicate? I would ask Xander, what do you think? Vanessa's trying to communicate. How, how did you feel about that? Maybe it's playful or it's in that direction, but certainly I'm guessing the audience will interpret it that uh, a different way, which is that it is absolutely hostile and it's abusive, really, and completely unfair and ridiculous. You could argue that this was edited in a funny way, but it's hard to imagine a justification for Vanessa to say that under any circumstances at this table. And in terms of the way that it's edited, it looks like she is being extremely, well, where do we put to it? So if I was to take a guess, given what we've seen thus far, because we did see that pain, right? And we did see potential for trauma being triggered that has nothing to do with Xander or anyone else on this show. And if she has a defense mechanism of hostility and superiority, then she might resort to that as a way. You know, she also mentioned being humiliated, which of course is, I think, something that a lot of people would feel on these kinds of shows if they're on the, the wrong end of the stick, whether they're the ones that are, you know, if you're giving an ultimatum, it could be kind of humiliating to even out yourself on this show, right? Also, if your partner is connecting with someone else, that could feel humiliating, right? And we all have an opportunity to deal with that, given that we voluntarily went on the show. And if we have traumas around humiliation, so for some people, when they are young and they're being neglected or abused or something, there can be a tone from the neglect or abuse that is humiliating. Also, as a child, it can feel humiliating even though the, the parents or the family system isn't actually trying to humiliate you. You a signal to other people that you want attention and they're depressed, for example, or they're uh, running from uh, a war. You know, this will, it, it, children will be neglected sometimes because the parents are refugees from war. And, as it, and it's understandable that the parents would not have a ton of resources to pay attention to their kids. And so uh, uh, the kid doesn't have that context or they don't really understand it fully. And so when they signal to their parents that they want attention and they don't get it, it can be interpreted as humiliation, as if the parents don't think of you as worthy enough of it, or that, especially if there's another sibling that you think you're actually in competition with that is getting more attention or something. So who knows? But there seemed to be a, a bit of a theme there for Vanessa about humiliation, and you think about trying to get out ahead. So w when we have that kind of humiliation trauma, and we, we've, with 90 Day Fiance, Angela seemed to exhibit some of this. So when we have that trauma, we have three different, when, uh, according to Schema Therapy by Jeffrey Young and others, we have three styles of coping with the schema that we have internalized that we are foolish or we are humiliating or, you know, it's just, we get treated that way. We feel that way. And then we start to believe we're just inherently humiliating. We, we do things that are self humiliating and, or other people are always going to humiliate, humiliate me, some sort of version of that schema, this, this entrenched belief based on experience, right? So there are three styles of dealing with that. You can either, uh, surrender to it, avoid it, or, 
overcompensate. So to surrender to the humiliation is to, is to act in a humiliating way. You don't like it, but you're like, well, I'm just humiliating. Or if you, so you know, there's two versions of the schema. It's like, I'm humiliating inherently, or other people are always gonna humiliate me. And these are different flavors. But if we go with, I'm humiliating, there's something humiliating about me. The way to surrender is to act, to self-sabotage, to act in a way that is humiliating to the self, to, to set yourself up for failure and to be humiliated. And then to say, well, yeah, I, at least I leaned into the humiliation. I had some control over it. I know I'm going to humiliate myself. I might as well do it on my own terms. Or it's a subconscious motivation of just like, I believe this is going to be true. So it ends up being true. And uh, that's, that's that one style. Then you have the avoidance where you would avoid any context in which humiliation was a question. So you would, hum you would avoid any task or any job or any uh, relational, you know, social situation where you might be humiliated. You might even avoid leaving the house or something like that. Then the third style is to overcompensate. And the, uh, uh, the behavior here is I'm going to humiliate other people and or I'm going to be perfect at everything so that no one has any question around whether or not I'm lesser. I'm always better than other people and everyone is humiliated in my awesomeness. <laughs> I'm so awesome and I spend so much time building up that awesomeness that there's no chance that I could ever be humiliated. The irony of this is that when people do that, because Angela does this on 90 Day Fiance, she comes out really literally swinging sometimes at people, violent, but usually it's verbal. And she, I think, is trying to get out ahead of that humiliation. She feels humiliated and, and because she has that schema, she interprets everything as humiliating. And so she tries to get out ahead of that by overcompensating and humiliating everyone else. But the irony is that by doing that, by overcompensating, you're actually humiliating yourself because in your effort to try to avoid humiliation, you're causing more humiliation on yourself. And then you feel more humiliated, which gives you more reason to believe in the schema that you're inherently humiliating and then you need more reason to engage in the surrender or the avoidance or the overcompensation. So it's a vicious cycle. And this is why you go to therapy, by the way, <laughs> with someone that understands this, which they don't always. So if we go off of a potential schema for Vanessa along those lines, and it would still fit within the realm of things I've said before, then at first, the humiliation or the rejection is an unbridled emotional upwelling of terror and sadness, right? We saw that. It was crying and over, she was trying not to cry and she actually went away from Xander. Was like, I got to get away because it was, you know, too stimulating, too arousing of that emotion for her. And then, you know, because it's in the moment and sudden and she hadn't prepared for it ego wise, it, it just is unbridled pain. And there's, there's no, and, and there's, there was also a, a, a vibe of trauma in her, you know, it was visceral. The crying had a sort of, a sort of desperation to it, if you will, or fear to it. Anyway, then she has some time. Uh, she has 24 hours now to get herself together and to rely on her defenses. You know, I don't want to go there. So I got to, I got to resort to my go-to defenses that I don't always need, but I definitely need now. And the defense that I've learned that works is to humiliate other people. And so I'm going to engage in that. I'm going to feel as though it's justified and I'm going to come out strong because of how much humiliation and how much vulnerability I experienced last night. You know, we could imagine that heading into that situation the previous night, she was still in this mindset of like, well, everything's going to work out right because Xander's in love with me. And even though intellectually I understand that Xander might fall in love with someone else or might get, gain a connection with someone else, it, it, you know, emotionally wise, in my heart, I know that'll never happen because uh, Xander wants to be with me and, uh, you know, so I'm safe, I'm okay. But then it's faced with the reality, you know, the emotion I'm next day, okay, engage in the fact. This is all subconscious or for the most part anyway. And then she has this urge and then it results in, in this. I mean, th that's my best guess as to what's happening. I would have to ask Vanessa, uh, does any of this ring true? I I'm sure that if I had that opportunity, Vanessa would say, uh, well, some, well, I know it would be somewhere between none of this is true, what you're saying, Kirk, <laughs> and you're completely off base. That's completely possible because people are pretty complicated. But so it's anywhere from every 100% of what you're saying is wrong to, well, so at best, I'm getting a lot of it right 
but some of it wrong. There's no possible way that I would be getting everything right because people are way more complex than that. And there's always caveats to everything, you know, for people with even personality disorders. They are rich, deep, multidimensional human beings with a lot of different, you know, asterisks on every single tendency. There's a lot of things going in this direction. They, they seem to reside in this hypothesis zone, if you will. Um, I choose Xander. Through our conversations, I've been really surprised to learn how much like similarities. And okay, so Yoli and Xander are gonna try out their trial marriage together. Yoli said something earlier that we should note that she sees Xander as having a huge heart and that she feels protective over people that have huge hearts. I think what think given what we've seen from Xander, especially more recently on the show, that what Yoli is referring to is that Xander is trusting and vulnerable and open and without pretense, maybe, without defenses, without any kind of fakery or something. Is a, is a genuine person, maybe even a little naive about other human beings. And that for Yoli, maybe Yoli had a sibling like this, or there's an inner child that's like that for her, and she feels protective. It's also normal and altruistic and moral to be protective of people that are vulnerable and are good-natured, right? So that Yoli said that, but you know, that's an, I don't know if that is an indication of something going on. You know, some, there's a, a lot of our personality traits have a, a good side and a downside, right? <laughs> it's good to be protective of people with big hearts. It also could indicate some need to be with people like that or some assumptions that you're making or some displacement, some projection of yourself into other people. So yeah, I, I, and all of it's normal. I, I, every aspect of my personality is that way. There are good aspects to it and bad aspects to it. All right, well, that is it for that episode. Everyone, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.